All right, hello and welcome. Today we're gonna go over a world uh, map guide, okay? And what you should strive for in your worlds, okay? So down below is gonna be chapters. I suggest you use them for the information that you would be most prevalent towards you, okay? I'm gonna right now list the five to six things, six things we're going to cover in this world map guide, okay? One, where are you going to set the story in this world, okay? Two, what kind of nations are around you, okay? And what kind of like races or how are they structured, okay? Number three, what are the resources and who has them, okay? Um, and you could also even add in there who are the superpowers or the, or the powers in this region, okay? Number four, what is the political situation um, around this like entire world? What's going on in this specific year or years that's happening, okay? Number five, what exactly is happening in this world? So you can base your example off of everything I'll talk about there. And then number six, others, in case I wanna add some other stuff, okay? So that's how this video structure is gonna be outlined, okay? So we're about to get into it. But first, today's video sponsor is myself. Are you a dungeon master that has been frustrated by D&D &D mass combat rules? Well, worry no longer. I have a solution for you DMs. The squad combat module lets you run mass combat quickly with massive customization options. Do you like additional D&D supplements that improve the immersion and realism of your games? Want maps for your D&D adventures? Reduce your prep time, improve your games, and become a Patreon member today by clicking the link below in the description to join. And I would like to thank my Patreons because they make all of this stuff possible. Uh, click in the description if you want to go and try and support me, okay? Otherwise, uh, we're going to cover this whole map, okay? And just a little tidbit, if you go to my uh, channel and you click on this little incarnate button right here, it will pull up some of these maps that you can edit if you have an incarnate account, okay? This is all dependent on the incarnate account. If you don't and you just want the maps, you can go to my Patreon and I will have the maps available for you to download, okay? They'll be in this big post right here and they'll be in the maps zips, all right? So let's get on with it, all right? So, this world map, all right. So, who, where are you going to set this story, okay? So, this is important to remember as a DM or GM, right, um, are going to set this story somewhere, right, in this world, okay? This is quote unquote a region, as you can see, it's Greece, but this is the world for my players. This is as big as the entire world will ever be for them, okay? Um, this is the known world that they know, okay? Nothing else past this. That's what a world map should be, okay? Um, we'll get into other maps and region maps later, but this is the world map for this, okay? So, where are you going to set this, okay? So, in this example, I set it in Athens, okay? As the Athenia right here is this big uh, thing right here, that big capital, okay? That's where it was set, right? And then, basically, this whole region down here, right? Marathon, Athena, Solus, Torcus. This is a region I actually designed, and I will show you in a future upcoming video, okay? Uh, this region was designed, but this is the whole world, okay? So, as you as a DM need to be like, hey, where am I going to set this world, okay? You need to be like, hey, what region of this map am I going to put them in, okay? Then you need to be like, hey, what are the politics of this region, right? Um, where is, like, fortify or focus on that specific region, okay? Don't have to go into massive detail about the other places. Give, like, a paragraph summary of what's going on. And then focus your main efforts on the actual region your players are going to be in, Okay. If your players aren't going to be teleporting across the world, which they probably shouldn't be, but if you want to keep your brain in your skull, um, yeah, basically, just focus on that region, and they'll be worried about this region as a main storyline, okay? But we'll get to the other parts of this later, okay? So, number two, what kind of nations are around you, okay? So, Athens is here. This is where more players start. The majority of the, fo of the story was focused here, okay? So, what other nations are around them, okay? Well, this light blue area that I've colored in is um, their vassal state. They won them over in a war 20 years ago, okay? And they pay tribute and uh, they defend themselves, okay? Green is a vassal state Thebes. And then uh, this purple region was a contested region that their own independence, okay? And then this red purplish stuff right here, this red with Sparta, they're their own faction, okay? They're together, right? Um, and these, all of these people together, and even this, uh, we'll come back to the yellow, but all of these people, right, 
they are, quote unquote, humanists, okay? They were human and demi-humans, okay? At least in my world, that was the main races of these people, okay? They did not like other races because this is ancient times and they didn't get along with people like Kunky Dory, could you imagine, okay? Um, and it depends on which regions you have, right? Because back then, you know, there was slavery and there was a whole bunch of other stuff going on, right? The yellow stuff over here was the dwarves, okay? They have their own stuff and they're in their own region. And in the blue region over here, dwarves and elves were their own um, second-class citizens, okay? They weren't first-class citizens, so therefore they did not have to fight in the uh, Roman, quote-unquote, the Athenian legions, okay? Again, you can do a whole storyline there, right? And the elves came over here, and I'll talk about that down there in more detail when we get to it, okay? But this was something else. It's basically where the elves lived, okay? Um, and number three, right? Where are the resources and who has them? Okay, so this is important, right? You see this purple bit over here with all this stuff? This was called the Dragon Empire. They had unlimited resources. They were like the superpower of this world. They were the United States or Soviet Union of this era, okay? Everyone else was uh, like lesser than them, okay? And then down here, Athena was Rome in this setting, right? So they had a, a lot of resources. Okay, they had steel, iron, pretty much everything they needed, okay, to conquer a lot of stuff. And that's what they did, okay? They were the undisputed military power down here, right? Um, Sparta was going to give them a run for their money, but, you know, they have the resources. So, iron, steel, where is all this stuff going to be? Who has them, right? And the dwarves out here had, like, adamantine, right? That's where it came from, for them at least, okay? It's important to think about where these resources are going to come from on a world scale, Okay. And it changes on depending on the era, right? Back in this time, like in the 300s to zero, and then a little bit past year zero, um, steel and iron, gold and silver, right? That's basically what you needed. Um, going past that, you don't need like coal and uranium and oil. You don't need that, right, for this era. And it just depends on what era you're in. If you go a bit past this, you're going to need higher quality steel. You're going to need gunpowder, right? And if you go past that, you're going to need oil and a whole bunch of other stuff, right? So it depends on uh, what area you're, you're sitting yourself in, right? Um, is food important? Is food going to be a massive export or an issue, right? Uh, things to think about in what era you're set in, okay? But for this era, food and iron and steel and gold and silver were basically, are you powerful in that, right? And the Athens down here had gold mines and silver mines. So they were fine pretty much, I guess, everything, right? They own steel and iron deposits. Uh, they basically were self-sufficient in whatever they did, right? And number four, what is the political situation? So in this case, I will say, you know, conquer territories, right? Light blue over here was a vassal state to the to the Athenians and this blue, okay? And then these regions down here, right, this little exclave down here, were their own um, recently conquered territories in the last um, 10 to 20 years, okay? So they were having problems and they had their own populations and they had their own classes of citizens and it wasn't, it was basically a hotbed, right? And then down here, this Naxos region for this light blue was basically, hey, this used to be our stuff. We want it back, right? So they're trying to sabotage it, okay? And again, Sparta over here was trying to um, attack or integrate Migratia, right? Um, that's what they were doing, right? Thebes was trying to stay neutral. And Eritrea out here, this other light blue, was just trying to be a vassal, right? And the Dragon Empire had their own intentions of starting stuff, right? Um, and I'll get to that when we get to point number five, but they were doing their own stuff, right? So you need to think about the political situations going on in the world, okay? You don't need to think about, like, every minor detail. You need to think about big picture stuff, right? What is Athens trying to do? Hold its territory. What is Sparta trying to do? Annex Migratia and threaten Athens, okay? What are other people trying to do, right? What are the elves down here trying to do? Are they about to fight a civil war, right? Or are they trying to hold themselves together or whatever, right? All important things you need to think about for a political situation map mode to like work, right? Don't need to think about the tiny detail, think big scale, okay? And then now we'll get to this world, okay? So number five is this world, okay? So as I've alluded to, um, we'll start in the south. The elves down here um, basically were a massive empire at one point. Think, uh, my history is failing me right now, but think... Um, it's even before Rome, so like 600 and 900. Um, Cretan Empire, um, basically a big empire that outlined everything, okay? So basically the main premise was um, 
they used to be a massive empire that controlled pretty much all of the stuff out here, okay? Massive, massive earthquake happened and volcano and drove and covered everything in ash, right? And killed a majority of the population and drove all of them back to their uh, homeland, right? Um, big, basically, what if happened, right? Um, so they have been a dormant society kind of to themselves. They haven't, you know, gone anywhere because they can't reproduce that fast, right? Um, so they were having a little minor civil war, High Elves versus Wood Elves, right? That was going to kick off during this era, right? between Kronos and Gorthy, right? And the players would come over from Athens as a mercenary group to fight for one of them, right? And then eventually, once the players got enough connections, they would be able to call on the Athenian military to swing it in one way or another to benefit Athens, right? Um, and the players were again gonna work for Athens eventually, right? Um, so that's how that was gonna go. So that's just one example of a political situation that you can use as a, as a DM or GM, right? To uh, strive it in to your favor and think about like what your players may or may not do, right? I didn't outline if they would pick side one or two. I just said that it would happen and whatever the players did would probably influence it, okay? Again, another thing would be this dragon empire, okay? This purple stuff over here, right? Um, in modern day Turkey is, right? So they, wanted to you know break and destabilize everything happening over here okay i think big scale they wanted to just destabilize everything over here so what did they do they uh, launched a little assault on um, an athenian territory over here um and basically i'll cover this more in my region video but um they launched an assault there uh, to strive and make orcs and goblins rise up and other creatures right rise up and hurt the athenian population there and make it like a big deal right to destabilize athens Right, they wanted Sparta to attack Migratia, which is what they were going to do, right? Again, subtly influencing all of the stuff to make it in their favor, right? They're trying to get Naxos to declare war on Athens to reclaim their territory, right? Um, they were trying to destabilize the vassal state over here, right? And they were trying to get Thebes to join Sparta to attack Athens, okay? And Ipridirus over here to join Sparta and attack Athens, okay? Why would they all do this? Very simple, right? Um, the Dragon Empire wants to expand its territory. They want to conquer these people in the green, right? The roads, basically roads, right? They want to conquer them, okay? How do they accomplish that without everyone, you know, coming to kick their ass like they would if the Greeks united, right? Very simple. You destabilize them all and you make them all fight each other, okay? And this was all happening in the background with me as the DM, you know, uh, making things happen, right? And letting the players explore the options if they wanted to, right? And they did unintentionally or intentionally, right? And that's just basically big scale macro of what was going to happen in the world, okay? Again, the players can influence it and, and determine and change it, and they did, okay? And so that was the main Dragon Empire's goal was to annex this stuff and have all these people fight each other. So while they did it, so they couldn't stand up to them, right? Athens was just trying to hold on to its stuff with a very powerful military and a quote-unquote liberal government, okay? For this time, we will say liberal government in the most, like quote-unquote possible okay because we're talking senators elected by rich people right we're not talking a liberal democracy right we're only talking about the first classes of citizens being able to vote no rights for the second class citizens right um that's what we're talking about here and i'll get into that a little bit actually so uh one of my players wanted to play a political game right and i was like okay so i designed the whole political system around how rome did right with changes for players right and skipping towards basically the end of the campaign basically he was elected a consul of rome uh and issued his dictator powers and basically gave all second class citizens citizenship in or a way to gain citizenship um in this empire right um to become first class citizens either by fighting in the legions or by you know being a resident for x amount of years okay and they had a vassal state of other races and stuff right but that was all what the player wanted to do right and that's how you can influence these global politics, right? And they were also able to counter the Dragon Empire on a mission that I'll talk about in a little bit, okay? But that's just basically what's going on with Athens, right? And then as you see, as you're going to see, this, all these other countries are going to have a little bit less detail, right? Because I didn't need that much detail. I just needed little bits of what was going on, and that was generally it, okay? So we'll start with Eritrea, okay? Eritrea was basically just a vassal state. They paid money to Rome, to Athens, okay? That was it. That was as far as I needed to go there. And they had their own little tiny military that would help out, and that was it. That's all I needed to write for them, okay? Thebes was the same way. Thebes was a country, or a nation, city-state actually, but 
basically they were independent. One of my players came from Thebes in the fighting arenas there and came to Athens, right? So they were second class citizens. They were a Leonin, okay? Um, and that's basically all the purpose they served, okay? Epidaeus and Sparta, okay? Eventually these things basically just merged. Corinthos attacked Migratia, okay, on the border with Athens, right? And they didn't like that very much because they had to initiate Operation Migration Freedom, right? Um, to take it back because they don't want somebody on their territory directly, you know, uh, Spartan, right? They wanted a border state, which was what Migratia was, but, you know, Sparta didn't want that, right? And then they basically had a little war over that and Athens won again in the end, right? Um, the yellow people, the yellow thing over here is the dwarves. Okay, this is basically I just said the dwarves live up here and they have really good resources and they're a little bit technologically ahead of people. Okay, and that was it. That's all I needed for them, right? Um, and that's it, right? You don't need to uh, flesh out all the details. I mean, if you want to flesh out all the details, you go right ahead. There's nothing stopping you, right? It's up to you and what you want to do there. I just suggest that you give little bits of information about where things are on the map world and see how they're interacting with each other. Okay, so we'll go back to this example, right? Uh, my players basically fought um, as a mercenary group for a bit. Then they were applied by the Senate to go do missions, and they were doing them all in the region of Athens, okay? Um, and basically, that's almost 95% of the story took place there, okay? Now, I want to use this world map to show how this story ends, basically, okay? So... They fight all the stuff in the region over here. And then for the world, my player was a satyr. He said that satyrs come from Samulkathai up here, okay? That's what he wanted. So I said, okay, cool. The Dragon Empire was going to go take them out, okay? Because they had a quote-unquote super weapon um, that kept them safe, right? They had a little fog cloud around them, and it kept people from, you know, attacking them and taking them over, okay? But the Dragon Empire found a way around that, and they wanted the island and the technologies that stored them, okay? So the Athenians... Uh, knowing this, right, because they sent uh, messengers over here being like, hey, this is going to happen. Also, Athens realized there was technology there, so they wanted to, quote-unquote, save the people, but, you know, get the technology. So they set a fleet out with the players on it, right, and in charge of it. Well, some of it, right? And basically, what happened was the players come all the way from Athens, all the way over here, right, and they basically go on the Odyssey, right? They get shipwrecked, a whole bunch of, you know, Counters happen, the Krakens and stuff. Anyway, they make their way there with basically a few of their crew, right? They get there, and the majority of the fleet's there, but the Dragon Empire's attacking. Long story short, one of the players sacrifices himself, gives the players a super weapon, and they get a flying ship, okay? The only one in existence. They then take this flying ship, and they need to take out the Dragon Empire before they, you know, destroy everything around here, okay? Because that's what the plan was, to take over everything eventually. So how are they going to do that, right? And the reason they were so scared was because 20 dragons destroyed this entire island. And Athens might be powerful, but 20 dragons is 20 dragons. So they took that little ship of theirs, and they were going to go to Pergamon, okay? They were going to go destroy the dragon, you know, people's capital, okay? So they take this flying ship with gunpowder and cannons and everything, and, you know, make their way there and have to fight through dragons, honor guard, everything you can possibly imagine, Okay. Basically, how the story ends is my players set a collision course um, on target with the you know core of um, Dragon Empire. Think Deus Ex Machina. Think massive explosion is gonna happen. Okay, if they if this ship collides with it. Okay, then my players set a direct collision course on it. Right, um, and you know they said, okay, well if we're gonna lose this ship and it has a, basically a nuclear bomb on it, um, can we save any of the tech? So my players, you know got uh they were working with some other npcs npc said yeah we'll, we'll teleport as soon as we're about to hit players apparently grab the artillery cannons and teleport away as the ship slams in and blows a nuclear hole and destroys a lot pretty much ugh, devastates the dragon empire in one go okay and they teleport funny story they teleport over to marathon because they're off target uh that's how teleporting works okay it didn't have a thing but they're off target but they weren't off target that badly right so that's how that story ended, right? And that was all thanks to this world, right? Um, you know where the islands are, you know the political situation and all of that stuff, right? Um, so we'll just talk about some other stuff for number six, right? Number six is like, how is all this stuff structured, right? As you can see, um, the players, um, if they wanted to, you know, travel this world and go over here, right? Because that was the original plan. 
as me as a DM was to have them, you know, sail the seven seas with like ships and, you know, gather stuff and build their own ships and fleet, right? And be pirates or whatever. And travel out through all these islands, right? And to do that, they need ships, right? Because of the way the world is designed, right? There's all these islands you need to go to to get there, right? So they would start out and go through them, right? And then you also need to think about, like, where do you want your primary plot points to be? Do you want them to be in a region? Do you want them to be in this, in this quote-unquote, this world map? You're like, hey, this, in these areas specifically in the world, my players will go to, and I will set up massive storylines, okay? For example, Athens region, okay? And then this uh, island down here, Crete, right, was going to be a major plot point for my campaign, right? So I would build this area out with an additional region map and you'll know, go from there, right? So just think about where you want the campaign to head generally, right? You don't have to finish it all entirely, right? You could set the world up in the region of Athens and then work on this later, but be like, I want to do X, Y, Z, and end at, uh, like, I don't know, W or ZZ. End there, right? Um, as an example, this region of Athens was, was Act 1, Act 2, was going to be on Corinthos, or, uh, sorry, not Corinthos, um, Crete, right? Act two is going to be down here, and act three was going to be in the Dragon Empire and Somokathai up here, right? And that's basically what happened, besides the part of act two, because act two, it, anyway, that's the main structure of how the world thing should build, right? And you also want to think about, like, big rivers, okay? How big rivers are going to work in lakes, right? There are some rivers on this map, right? And there, this map is very detailed. There's a link in the description to it, so you you go check it out, right? Um, and these rivers, basically, they're going to be the lifeblood of pretty much everything that anyone does, right? Um, just think about where rivers are, because rivers and lakes are massively world-impacting, okay? They are world-impacting today, but especially back in the days, like even back before 2000, um, they were massively important to the economy, to people's living, you know, popular everything, okay? You need to think about where your rivers are and where your mountain ranges are, right? Mountain ranges are going to defend Sparta, as you can see. It's perfectly defended from this side. This side, they have to either land at the back, which is a bad idea, or they have to come through a narrow pass, right? This is why Sparta was really hard to defend, and there was no walls around Sparta because the Spartans could go meet a threat in any direction because of where the geography was, world-wise, okay? And so I recommend, you know, the big outstrokes of where your things are going to be in the world, right? It'd be like mountain ranges out here, as you can see, right? Impassable terrain, lakes... Um, rivers out here, right? Trees, where the forests are gonna be, right? Is there a swamp down here? This swamp will come back to you. We'll come back to in the region map uh, video. Um, but that was important, right? Because this swamp was a swamp, right? And it became important for my players, right? Just think about where you want big things on the map, and that's the that's where I can tell you to go from, okay? Um, and that's basically number six, and that's basically this video again. Uh, leave any questions you have down below. Otherwise, there is a video on your screen. I'll take you to 10 racial feats. And you can check out my Patreon up there too. Um, otherwise, you people have a nice day.